Welcome to Q&A with the Fertility Godmother. Have, do you remember a time when um, you were maybe in middle school or high school and there's something that you wanted so bad, but it just wasn't, you just couldn't do it. You went to school feeling really good. Maybe you were trying out for a team or drama or the debate club or something. and. Uh, and you really thought you were going to get it, and then you, you were feeling so good, you go to school, and then they tell you, well, I'm sorry you didn't get the part, and it just, like, blindsides you. Well, but eventually you go through life, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of us take that information and say, forget you. Don't tell me that I'm not going to be an athlete, or I'm, I'm not going to be good in debate, and I'll show you, and we become really good at something that we love to do, right? Can you relate to that? So what if you took the same attitude? Now here we are as an adult, and you go into the doctor, really excited and wanting to plan your pregnancy, and they give you this diagnosis, this label of advanced maternal age. What can you do with that? So we're gonna go ahead and unpack that today. I get a lot of questions about advanced paternal age, what you can do, how you can help aid quality. And so we're gonna kind of umbrella and un unpack that and kind of tweak that, that um, label, okay? Sound good to you? All right, great. So come and come and join me. Grab your tea. I know it's not a tea, but grab your tea and, and listen to this. So first of all, advanced maternal age is anybody who's over 35. 35 is young. 40 is young. Um, and but you, on one hand, it's information. I don't like the labeling, but the uh, it's information. And what if you looked at it as so? you know, let me back up for a second. A lot of the women I work with, they take that, that diagnosis and that label, and it creates a lot of fear, a lot of tension, a lot of doubt, and they start to go into this place of worry and fear instead of, well, what are there, there's got to be things that I can do to offset my age. You know, I just met my husband, or I was doing my career, and I just put it on hold, or we weren't ready for kids. We were trying to get everything financially planned, right? And, or financially secure. And then, you know, all of a sudden you have this, this diagnosis, this label. But what if it's not like an end all be all? What if you turned it around and you were the one that said, okay, you can say that I have advanced maternal age but I know that there's things that I can do to offset that. So maybe it needs, it takes a little bit more effort. Maybe it's not exactly as you imagined that you would just magically get pregnant, which is really challenging, even for people in their 20s, believe it or not. It's really challenging to get pregnant. Things have to be lined up just right in your mind, your body, your heart, all the timing, the, your hormones. There's so many things that have to be lined up just right. And so what if you knew that there was things that you could do that could really impact the quality of your eggs and help you get pregnant, even if you are in advanced maternal age? So as long as you have eggs and you are healthy, then I believe that you can get pregnant. And there are absolutely things, I've seen it, I've been doing this for 17 and a half years, over 17 and a half years now and I know that it can happen I know that it can happen for you so this is what I'm going to do I'm going to take you through my five-step process I'm going to give you the four of the steps because the first step is really diving deep in one-on-one -on -one conversation and talking about emotions and labs and all that kind of stuff so I'm going to take you through my process of what I do um, work, how I work with the women that I work with to give you some steps that you can start doing right now. Okay, how's that sound? So, first of all, you need to know that 
really impacting egg quality is going to take a minimum of at least three months, at least three months. So you want to prepare your body and do everything you can to be as healthy as possible. So that means you're stopping smoking, you're limiting drinking, you're not doing drugs, right? You're, you're finding ways to make your lifestyle healthier. And then this means for both you and your partner and your, and your husband, if you're, um, okay. So you want your, uh, the, the male partner has to be just as healthy and strong, especially if you're older, because you're doing this together. So you really need that teamwork to make it work to make it successful, teamwork to make the dream work, right? Have you heard that thing? So it's really important that you guys are in alignment and you're both healthy and doing everything you can. Even if his semen analysis comes back amazing, they're not testing the genetics of the sperm. They're not testing the, the quality of the sperm. So it's important that he's just as healthy. You both are on this journey together of, of wellness. And as you're getting healthy in your mindset, in your body, then you'll be able to increase your chances of getting pregnant and having that baby. So usually I recommend you take at least three months to really prepare your body. And sometimes it's nice to take a little bit of a break and start focusing on other things. Because as you can very well be aware, this infertility journey, this fertility journey, I don't like the word infertility, is um, it's consuming, right? It's consuming. So it's going to be refocusing and it's really nice. It's really refreshing to take a break and just take a step back because sometimes uh, one of my mentors, Sandra Yancey says, sometimes uh, you have to take a step back before you can launch off. So you can take a step back and you look and you evaluate what are some things that you can do differently. So one of the things is diet. Okay. So I usually start um, the people that I work with off with my really gentle prepare for pregnancy fertility cleanse and to really kind of launch fast takes a big, big leap. And there's a little resistance and hesitancy in the beginning. Um, and then they're so happy that they did because you feel so much better and you know, your body's working better and functioning better. The communication, because your, your body's not trying to work so hard to remove all the toxins and to, to try to help to balance out everything because it's not, it's already taking care of itself, right? When you are putting toxins, if you will, or unhealthy food in your body, your body has to work really hard just to balance that out. So that's why it's really important to do a little detox, not to mention you want to try to eliminate the toxins that you're going to be passing on because the toxins do pass through the placenta and they will impact your baby. We know that the studies show that of all the toxins in the cord blood, forget the number, but it was, it was crazy. Like 400 something, I think it was in the cord blood. Uh, I'm not really great at remembering numbers and I don't have that one here with me, but you can, you can research it. Um, and anyways, sorry, sidetracked it there. So the, the doing the cleanse, doing some type of, of a cleanse to help your body regenerate. And then you're really just putting in a ton of macronutrients, a ton of nutrition that you're going to be getting. So you're going to be eating really healthy, lots of vegetables, right? Lots of healthy fats, lots of healthy protein and letting your body take a break. So that's the first step. Then the second step is really getting uh, reviewing um, supplements that are going to be really good for you. So you may know some of the really key ones that have been studied are like coenzyme Q10, and you want to get a, a decent quality or high quality of coenzyme Q10. Um, sometimes melatonin can be good for you, but you have to be careful with melatonin, making sure your vitamin D levels are good and you're taking enough good vitamin D. Healthy, again, healthy fats like fish oil is really important on your journey, not only for when you are pregnant, you know about um, fish oil when you're pregnant, but it's important to have that there already before, right? You want it because it enhances all your cells and it's really important so to have some good quality fish oil. And good quality is important because you want to make sure there's no mercury in there. You need to be on a good prenatal. And if you're a vegetarian, a B complex is essential. Uh, so those are, those are some things that are really going to help as far as supplements uh, with lots of greens. And um, I like to take an acetylcysteine. Those are some of the basic, basic ones. And then I write my patients Chinese medical herbs, um, medicinal herbs, and I call them 
their um, their little herbal remedy, their little magic potion, because it's what it tastes like. I, <laughs> I feel like I'm the little on the the fertility godmother when I'm making the special brew for you, and it doesn't taste very good, but it works. It works magic. Uh, it really helps uh, the cells. It really helps your body, the egg quality, and in general, produce more ATP, which will help impact the egg quality. And you want to work also with blood flow, right? So in order to have healthy eggs, you need to have good oxygenation, good circulation, and nutrition. So you can see they kind of like stack on each other. They all work together and really helping you become as healthy and vital as possible, which is directly going to impact the quality of your eggs. So it's really, really important. So you have the, the cleanse, then you have the supplements and the herbs, and then you have the mindset piece right and making sure that everything's in alignment and there's not these feelings of guilt or regret or believing or kind of questioning if it's even possible for you really shifting that and maybe asking yourself a different question right maybe just leaning all the way in and going for it because the truth is if you hold back you're not protecting yourself at all no matter what, if God forbid you don't get pregnant, you're gonna have to deal with that and it's not gonna be easy. But you, so you just lean in and believe that you can get pregnant and take the steps and put in the effort and change your lifestyle. Um, those are gonna be really key for you in order to improve your chances of getting pregnant. And don't take on the advanced maternal age. Use it as information. It's, 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 it's maybe it's important information, but it's not, doesn't mean that you cannot get pregnant. I believe that you can. So um, I hope you found that helpful today about talking about advanced maternal age and trying to think if I um, make sure I cover the things I wanted to, to cover, covered a lot, I think, in a short period of time. So if there you need help with that, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to click the link in the bio and I have a lot of resources there for you that are available that can be really helpful for egg quality and diet. And I'm also available to, um, to meet with you uh, online and here we can do a, a virtual con a consultation or, or start you on a program. So I'm here for you to your health, happiness and fertility and we'll see you soon. Thank you.